What's up everybody, my name is Dan An, and welcome to Honestly. Today we're checking out the OnePlus Nord, which in my opinion is OnePlus's attempt to reclaim its foothold in the budget phone market. Now OnePlus did send this phone to me after checking out my review of the OnePlus 8 Pro, but as always, you guys know that this review is going to be unbiased and totally honest. Now this phone has not been released here in the United States just yet. There is a plan, it seems like, to bring a version over here to the States. And the question becomes, is this phone something you should be on the lookout for? Well, let's get honest. 2020 has been a great year for phones and the Nord is another reminder that you don't have to break the bank to get a phone that is really, really good. And I feel like you could take that money saved from not buying one of these crazy thousand dollar phones and just add so much more value to your life. For example, you might take that money saved and pick up this. This is the brand new Sony WH-1000XM4 Bluetooth headphones, which are awesome by the way. Make sure you guys have subscribed because I'm gonna be reviewing those in a really unique manner in a few weeks. Or you could take that money saved and like build yourself a budget gaming desktop. I mean, doesn't that sound like so much more value to your life than something like, hey, I can drop my phone in water. Hey, I can wirelessly charge my phone. Or hey, I can take slightly better pictures. <laughs> okay, no more preaching. Um, let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments below. I wanna start with what I really like about the Nord and it begins with the unlocking experience. So getting inside of this phone is extremely fast. As a matter of fact, if you use the in-screen fingerprint unlock plus the face unlock, it's basically instantaneous. It's faster than the OnePlus 7 Pro and just a hair smidge slower than the OnePlus 8 Pro, which is a huge compliment because the 8 Pro costs double the price of the Nord. If you use just the face unlock alone, as a matter of fact, five out of 10 times, around five out of 10 times, by the time the screen turns on, your face has already been detected and so you're at the home screen, which is really impressive. It's a smidge slower than the 8 Pro because on the 8 Pro I felt like it was around eight out of 10 times by the time the screen turned on, it would, you would already be at the home screen because again, your face already was detected. The other thing that I love about the Nord is that for some reason, OnePlus has decided on the Nord in order to bring the fingerprint scanner back down towards the bottom, just like the 7 Pro. Because for some reason on the 8 Pro and on phones like the Galaxy S20 Ultra, they move that fingerprint scanner like an inch up from the bottom, which I think is a weird design because basically every phone that had a physical button and a fingerprint scanner on that button before these phones, they were all towards the bottom. So I don't understand why they would make us unnecessarily retrain our thumb muscle memory. I, I complain about this in all my videos. Let me know if you guys agree in the comments below. Flat glass is back, baby, and I love it. For those of you guys who don't know, on the 7 Pro and the 8 Pro, OnePlus went with a curved glass display on the front to minimize those side bezels and gave it a really premium look of infinite glass. But the downside was that sometimes you would just get these palm rejection issues because it would think that your palm was a finger. But having the flat glass allows you to use it really easily with just one hand. And it's kind of ironic because the clear case that comes with this phone, by the way, again, for those of you guys who are new to OnePlus, OnePlus includes a clear case, includes a already applied uh, screen protector, a warp charge hub thing, so you don't need to go out and buy another one, a fast charge capable or warp charge capable cable, as well as a SIM pin tool, which is something us in the United States don't get with things like Apple. So really, really awesome, especially compared to some of these rumors we're hearing about other companies trying to cut accessories. Really, really cool of OnePlus. Um, anyways, the clear case that comes with the Nord is easily the best one out of the 7 Pro and the 8 Pro, which is ironic because again, you don't need a case to use this phone one-handed because, well, flat glass. Without the case, the Nord still feels premium in spite of the five to $600 price tag, which is really weird because five, $600 is a lot of money. But compared to the competition that went with more plastic, OnePlus kept glass on the back end and on the front, but to cut costs, the side bezels, they used a shiny plastic versus metal, which honestly, you can't even tell. And then again, to cut costs, they used the same buttons from the 7 Pro versus like, I know I recognize that the vibration switch here on the 8 Pro is slightly shorter, a little bit thicker, which is something that I prefer. It gives you a little bit more control, but for the cost saved, I'm okay with this. I also really liked the dimensions of the Nord. The best way I can put it is that with a 6.6 inch screen, it's big enough to give you that like, whoa factor every time you turn it on because of how big and beautiful the screen is. But at the same time, it's not so big that you can't use it one-handed. I don't have very big hands. My hands are kind of like small, medium, but I can still use it with one hand pretty easily. There are some things that I dislike about the Nord and the biggest one is not so much about the Nord itself, but with OnePlus as a whole. So remember that comment I made about the in-screen in fingerprint unlock button on the 7 Pro being at the bottom, then the 8 Pro being like an inch from the bottom, and then with the Nord being at the bottom again? 
This design inconsistency I've noticed is the case across all three phones that I've tried. So for example, when I moved things over from my 7 Pro to the Nord, it affected notification settings in ways that did not happen when I moved from the 7 Pro to the 8 Pro. Like for example, Outlook. Outlook has this default email sound that is always the default email sound regardless unless you go in there and tweak it yourself. But on the Nord, it took the liberty of changing that Ding, 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 sound of Outlook, sorry, that was terrible, but it changed that default mail sound to one of its own system sounds, and it really confused me. I was like, what, what, why is this sound happening? Where is the default Outlook sound? Very, very unusual, but it's more than just these little tweaks. The Messages app looks and feels totally different. The way you get to submenus within the Messages app is totally different. The way you get to submenus in the Camera app are totally different, and these phones are not the 7 Pro is not old. This is one year old compared to the Nord. And to see design ch changes and differences that striking within one year is just a little bit disconcerting for me. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Let me know if you guys think that that would bother you in the comments below. The next thing I dislike is that if you don't have a ton of light, the camera performance on this phone is just Ugh, it's whatever. The majority of my pictures are inside the house because my kids are here, you know, we're, it's too hot outside. And so we're reliant on artificial light. We don't have a ton of natural light coming in. And every single one of those pictures, on my phone at least, look bleh, whatever. Um, they're soft, they're noisy, they just don't look very good. And the thing is, I understand it's a budget phone, but OnePlus boasts that, hey, this is the same sensor on the OnePlus 8. And it makes you wonder, like, is the camera on the OnePlus 8 also that bad? Well, anyways, I'll do a more uh, detailed camera review a little bit later in the review. And just keep in mind that there are Gcam mods that you can do to take slightly better pictures. So keep that in mind as well. The last thing I dislike about the Nord is the giant pill cut out there on the Nord. I understand at this point, it's a necessary evil. If you want that edge to edge, you know, infinite screen looking thing, the and you want a selfie camera, it's inevitable. All right, I get it. I just don't love it. And if you start getting a lot of notifications, you all are probably more popular than I am. But if you, if you guys start getting notifications, you run out of space and it gets really crowded and not great looking really quickly. All right, let's talk about the specs. The phone comes in two color variants, either blue marble, AKA Dave 2D blue, or this gray onyx, which is a glossy gray color. It comes with either eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, or 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. There is a six gigabyte RAM version, but it's not available in Europe, so I'm gonna ignore that one for now. The Nord utilizes the slower UFS 2.1 storage compared to higher end phones that use the faster, newer UFS 3.0 or even the newest UFS 3.1 speeds. The phone has a, as I mentioned earlier, 6.6 inch AMO LED screen with Gorilla Glass on the front and the back. It also has a 90 hertz refresh rate screen, which is really unique at this price point. It'll give you super smooth scrolling and some games that can utilize that high refresh rate, it'll be awesome there as well. It's got a 1080 by 2400 resolution and powering this phone is the Snapdragon 765G 5G. So it has 5G capability with the graphics processor Qualcomm Adreno 620 graphics. And it's all running on a pretty big 4,115 milliamp hour battery with the incredible warp charge capability which comes with the phone. And so you guys don't need to buy any of that stuff. It comes with the phone and it gives you 70% battery in just 30 minutes, which for me personally has been life-saving and it's really awesome. On a full day of use, 16 hours from eight in the morning to 12 a.m. the following day, playing things like PUBG, really light PUBG gaming, uh, YouTube, heavy work emails, heavy personal emails. Oops, there's PUBG notifying me now. Um, and uh, a lot of music listening, again, ended at 25% battery, which is pretty fantastic. There are six lenses on the Nord, which is kind of crazy. You've got a 32 megapixel main selfie shooter paired with a eight megapixel wide angle lens, which is pretty cool for selfie cameras. On the back, you get the same 48 megapixel camera found on the OnePlus 8, an eight megapixel wide angle lens, a two megapixel macro camera, and a five megapixel depth sensor for better quality portrait photos. The eight gigabyte variant comes in at $475 US. This is estimating conversion from European prices. And the 12 gigabyte version comes in at about $600 
But again, these phones are not available here in the US just yet, so we don't know what they would cost when they do get released here. In terms of pure specs, the Nord beats out a lot of other budget competitors out there that are readily available here in the US, but there are two main areas of weakness of the Nord. The first one has to do with the screen brightness. So compared to something like the Pixel 4a, the iPhone SE, and the Galaxy S10 Lite, the screen is dimmer compared to those phones, but keep in mind that the Nord uses an AMO LED panel versus the iPhone SE, which uses like an IPS panel. And what that basically means is that colors are gonna look richer, blacks are gonna look deeper on the Nord compared to the iPhone. The other area where it loses out, and I mentioned this before, has to do with the camera. So here are just some sample cameras of the Nord, but if you guys look at, at a lot of the stuff that's written and demonstrated out there, I don't have those phones with me, but if you look at com camera comparisons, the Nord does seem to be the weaker camera of the bunch. For me personally, I would rather have more camera setups, wide angle, macro, eh, whatever, I could do without macro. But I like the, the wide angle selfie, the wide angle back because I realized like when I was taking, when I was out taking pictures, I realized just how much more you can capture without having to move because I'm lazy as hell, right? So um, I'd rather have more camera options than an awesome camera. Like, this is my personal preference. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As for video modes, I recommend you shoot in the 4K 30 mode. It will look choppy compared to 1080 60, but it will look a little bit sharper because the 1080p just looks a little bit soft. And again, make sure you have adequate lighting, otherwise just everything will look not great. If you want a great video shooter, apparently the iPhone SE is dominating in that area. While the cameras aren't the best, you're probably gonna get one of the better gaming experiences out of the Nord because you've got a better Snapdragon 765 processor in here compared to the processor in the Pixel 4a, and you've got the Adreno 620. Now, I'm not a big mobile gamer, but I can tell you that it performed great. I downloaded PUBG just for the sake of it, and by the way, I absolutely crushed, destroyed in that game, came third place my first try, but I think that really has to do with the fact that like I didn't experience any frame skipping, no lag, nothing like that. It really was a good experience. Now keep in mind, if you guys are expecting to use all 90 hertz for games, some games cap your FPS. I think PUBG, based on the way it felt, it looked like it capped me at 30 FPS, maybe 60, I think it was 30. Um, so you gotta keep in mind, I'll leave a link in the description below for games that allow you to take advantage of high refresh rate screens. So since this phone is a European version of the phone and not a US version, it's missing some bands, antennas, I don't know what the word is here, but it's missing some of that. And so the OnePlus asked us to monitor, hey, are you having any connectivity drops? Are you able to connect to LTE and all that stuff? I don't live in the most happening place here in the US. I live next to cows and yet I it performed just as well as my OnePlus 7 Pro did. So no issues on that front. The Nord only has a single set of speakers firing at the bottom, and even though there is another speaker grill here at the top, that's only for phone calls. And yet, even for having one little set, set of speakers, the sound quality was not so bad. It's actually kind of comp comparable to the 7 Pro. The 7 Pro did sound a little bit more bassy, and the mids were a little bit better, but again, not too bad. As for call quality, it was good for the most part. I think there was one hiccup where somebody was using a in-ear Bluetooth headset and I couldn't hear them very well, but I think that was the one exception. Otherwise, call quality has been pretty good. So my overall thoughts. The OnePlus Nord is a phone that does everything, in my opinion, above average. Now it might have subpar camera quality, but where it makes up for that is in the amount of focal lengths you get with the ultra wide, the macro, the standard, and the you know depth of field sensor, as well as the standard and the ultra wide on the front. So to have all that is pretty amazing at the price point. Now, if you are someone who's a hardcore phone photographer on a budget, there might be a better phone out there for you, but for anybody else who's looking for a phone that can do it all pretty well at a good price, I strongly consider that when the Nord comes to the United States, that you check it out and give it a hard look before making a decision for your next phone. 
All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this one. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps this channel grow, helps this video get out to the, you know, the interwebs. And then make sure you guys comment, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you guys hit that notification, all that stuff. Anyways, everybody, until next time, stay safe, and as always, stay honest.